Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at John Wick from Mayfax number 85. As you can see here it says 85. This is John Wick from chapter 2. I do want to say maybe the first, like when you see him in the first part of the movie, um, because like when he goes to Rome to go, you know, on his mission, he's actually wearing all black. So I do want to say this is probably from the first part. As you can see here, we're getting a good look at the back of the of the box, see what it comes with. What we're going to do now is take the box off the spinning turntable and unbox it. Alrighty everyone, so let's start the unboxing. I'm just going to raise the camera up a little bit so you can get a better view. There we go. I already actually um, unboxed it. Um, I always actually unbox my figures before I do a figure review just so I can get a better look at what the figure comes with, what all entails and things like that. So let's do the unboxing. Now these figures, especially from Mayfax, they're quite pricey for the for the figure. I mean, let's put it this way. You can buy a nice seven, six, six, six seven inch figure, 20, 30 bucks nowadays. This one's about three times more. Mayfax are very expensive, but they're very, very detailed. So that's why, I'm not gonna say I prefer them more, but, you know, that's why I did get them. Also, I'm a big fan of John Wick, so. There we go. Put that aside now. Sorry if I was talking, you couldn't really hear me, but. This is everything that the figure comes with. What we're gonna do next is take everything out and lay it all on the table and see all what the figure comes with. Alrighty, everyone. So, this is everything the figure comes with. As you can see, it does come with quite a few things. Um, I know some figures like the the Mezco one I did he came with a bunch of things but considering this one it still comes with quite a lot of few things so the first thing we'll go over he does come with his dog the Pitbull he never named him his name is just dog um, I know when I reviewed the Diamond Select John Wick when his you know first dog Daisy it's just, it was just a plain plastic casting of a dog plastic and painted and I do believe the Mesco 112 one that I just um, did it recently. Um, it, did, it did come with the dog, you know, the pit bull. Um, but what I like about this figure is this dog's head is actually articulated. You move side to side, up and down. And he has a 360 turn. Now I know it's not much, you know, his legs could have been more articulated and stuff like that. But considering that the other dogs did it and this one did, I like that. The paint application on it is very nice. It's just a subtle, you know, a lot of people are just going to look at it and it's just, it's just one color, but no, the, the collar is a different color, the eyes, the nose, you can actually see the spot right here in the front. So they really did a nice job with them, although one gripe I do have about them, is you can see the crease here, uh, when they were doing the casting, it's almost like it was two pieces, like this is what, like, how they were holding on to it, to make the rest of the figure, you know, the, the, the dog, and then his leg, and then they just kind of glued it together. Other than that, very nice. He does come with an extra head sculpt. This one's the more roughed up one. Bloody one. You can see his uh, his beard there. His hair is a little bit messed up. Which I do like that they include an extra head sculpt. Let's get a better view. But let me, and then I'll tell you what I was going to say a little bit here. It does look like Keanu Reeves. But... I mean, for a small figure, I know they can put in a lot of work, and, I mean, you look at him, it's Keanu Reeves, you know what it is, because it's John Wick, but, what I don't like about it, though, is, I know I have a few figures that come with different head sculpts, now, I appreciate some of the head sculpts that come with, one smiling, one's not, but these ones, when they give the extra head sculpt, when this one's all bloodied up, I don't really like those, considering the fact that his face and hair are the only things that's messy, but the rest of his clothes is clean. So that just doesn't make sense to me. So that's that's its head sculpt. I won't go much into that anymore. He does come with a few pairs of hands. This one's more like an open one. I think this is a Traeger one actually. Let's see here. 
Yeah, this is actually, I'm oh, sorry. This is actually for, you know, to hold the weapons. So, to hold the weapons. This one's just more, I think it's, I kind of want to say it's for when he, when he has a gun on one hand, this one can, you know, be holding the other one, the other side of it, like that, that looks so. So he does have that. And what I do like about every single one of his hands, he has a ring on every single one of his left hands, which is very nice. He doesn't lose it until the next movie anyway, spoilers. <laughs> And I do believe, actually, I made a mistake. I'm not too sure what that one's for, but this one's the one that's for holding the extra, the extra part right here, like this. And this one does also have the ring finger on it. I actually want to say this one's more for when he's, you know, here, let me put this like this so I'm not getting too messy. There we go. This one, he's, you know, holding the, the shotgun. And then this one's kind of right there, like this. See? Oops. So I think that's what that's for. This one is what I really liked about most anything is they included the hand with the pencil. Because in the first movie, they did claim that he did it. That he killed three men with a pencil. But in this movie, he actually got to see him do it. And there it is. The hand with the pencil. That's so awesome they included that. I like that. And then these two hands, I believe, are just closed fist hands. Regular standard hand. And then the other one, like I said, does also come with the ring. I like that detail they put in there. Let's set those aside for now. Getting into the weapons that he comes with. We'll start with the small ones. His compact, I think this is a Glock. It's the one that he has like on his like on his side or I think it's on his on his leg or something like that. Um but it's the one that he uses all the time. I do want to say it's a Glock uh 30 no, you know, 26. I think it's 26. Yeah, Glock 26. Um It's just honestly, I mean, the detail is there. You know it's a Glock. They painted the, the the magazine, you know, silver. But the rest of the gun, I guess you can tell. Yeah, it's like silver, black, and then silver again. So you can tell it's a gun. The detail is there, but the paint, it's just not really there for me. But they did include the Glock 26, his subcompact gun, his side on, his main handgun that he uses. There's another Glock. I mean, I know he uses the uh, the 1911, but this is one of the main ones he uses throughout the movie. It's, um, I believe I want to say it's a Glock 34. Yeah, Glock 34, custom. I believe it, when, he, when he goes to the the guy that's actually helping him with the weapons and stuff, and he's getting ready, this is the one that he, you know, he tells him about. Um, has the, you know... You can't really tell all the details that the guy was saying, but you can tell it has the, if you look closely, you can tell it has the, the port. Right, where he's like, you know, has extra port, or the, he's like, you'll appreciate the, the ports on the, on the slide, so, you know, silver, black, and then silver for the magazine. Nice little Glock there, Glock 34. Next is the AR-15, I believe it's a TTI T. I have it written down, so. TTI TR1 Ultralight AR-15. It's the one that the guy's also telling them about. Um, I mean, it has a lot of details on it. I mean, it has a scope. I mean, the forward hand grip. It has the, the magazine with the double, the double magazine that he talks about. Um, the bullet, you can see the bullet up here. You can see the ejection port right there. They painted it a different color. Um, I really like the detail they put into it. They did a lot of detail, even though it's just casting, you know, plastic. They put a little bit more detail into this, and I like that with the, you know, with the strap. And the last thing that he comes with is the Benelli M4 shotgun. As you can see, it's just a normal, normal shotgun. You know, I mean, not really sh normal shotgun. It's normal plastic. Um, but I do like that they actually uh, added the extra shotgun shell there, as you can see, and the port. The ejection port is painted a different color. I do like that they use that. Very nice detail. So that's everything that the figure comes with. Now, 
some of you might be thinking why <laughs> I know so much about guns. I do know mo a lot about guns. I'm a gun aficionado myself. I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, but as far as for this video, I do look up, um, like I knew these two um, because of the first movie. I knew this one. Um, I knew this one too. I'm not too sure. I mean, there's a lot of AR-15s out there. I just looked it up because I want to be very thorough with my reviews that I do and not just say like, hey, this is a shotgun. You know, whoop to do This is an AR. Okay, this is a handgun. No, I want to let you guys know this is a Glock 26, the 34, the TTI, TR, AR-15, and the Benelli M4. As far as where they're made, I mean, these are Austrian. Um, I know that's Italian. I'm not sure what that one because I didn't look it up. But the only reason I know that is because from the movie, Austrian, he says it. And then the Benelli M4 is just, um, I've been looking into getting one. But they're pretty pricey. But anyway, that's not part of this video. I'm just trying to clarify why I know so much about it. As for my other videos, I do the same thing. If, uh, if a figure comes with some weapons that I know of that I can look up, um, I will do so because I want to be very thorough. So what we're going to do next is take all this away and bring out the figure and take a closer look. Alrighty folks, here he is, John Wick from the second movie. As you can see here, he has the <clears throat> the white shirt with the tie. Um, it's very actually a nice figure actually. Um, the paint detail is very, very nice. As you can see like for example, we'll go over here, that here shortly too, but you can tell he has the, what is it, the cuff, cuff links, right there, you can tell that. But the paint detail is very nice, I mean, there's not too, too much going on with this figure as far as, you know, paint details. And what I mean by that is, like, you can tell he's wearing, okay, let's start from the head. The head sculpt on this is very nice, you know, it's nice, clean, he's not combed all the way back like on, on another figure we'll do a comparison on the other Mayfax figure you know nice beard it's, it's the same exact as the other one except this one's not bloody and hair's a little bit more pulled back as far as that I mean the suits just all one color and you know the unfortunately you can see when the joints are a little bit of different color, so it just kind of sticks out a little bit, unfortunately. The blacks, you know, the tie is black, the same color as the suit. White shirt. Not too much detail going on. I mean, you can see the little wrinkles on the, on the suit a little bit. You can see the, the belt has a little bit of detail with the silver at the buckle. Here, let me move that a little bit. There we go. As far as the back of the figure, I mean, you can see the belt and then, you know, his pants. I do like that about that though. Like this is just kind of hanging there. It's not, it's not part of the figure per se. Like really stuck onto him. It's almost like a, like you can almost take it off. Almost. I haven't tried. I'm not going to. I don't want to break it. Um, so I do like that. It's legit a coat. So it's not stuck onto him in any way, shape, or form. The pants. I mean, you can see the zipper line. The back of the pants. No pop. Actually, you do see the pockets. They're a little bit high up there. You can see them just barely. There we go. Um, as far as the shoes go, I mean, before we go into the shoes, I do like the little, I guess you can say creases around the pants. You know, like they don't, pants don't usually just, they're not completely straight. They have like a lot of creases and, and wrinkles on them and stuff like that. And I do appreciate to put that onto them. And then as far as the shoes, they're nice and shiny, you know, black shoes, the pointy. I'm not too sure with the pointy stuff, though. I never really, really looked at the shoes he's wearing. And besides, I'm, I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. I don't really dress fancy. I don't dress in suits myself. Um, and if I did, I don't know if I'd go with the pointy stuff. I don't know if they sell them like that. I'd want a little bit more like a square myself. I don't know. Uh, I've never really looked into it, so. That's the figure overall as far as the paint detail. Not too much going on. I mean, the only difference, only really big thing that sticks out with paint detail is, is the shoes, because they're brighter, you know, they're shinier, the hands, and the face and neck. Everything else is just kind of plain, unfortunately. Um, although I do want to see the hands, if you can actually get a good look, the hands and the, f the head sculpt. It's like a different white. Like he has a tan going on on his head and his face and neck. And his hand is just very, very white. Which, uh, I don't know. That's Like I said, uh, when I first looked at the figure, I noticed that right away. Um, 
I know some other YouTube videos actually do, you know, likes and dislikes. Uh, I'm not going to do too, too much about that. Um, overall, like, that's the only complaint that I do have is that as far as the paint is, this is, you know, just lighter than that side sculpt. So, let's stand them back up here and what we're going to do next. This guy has a hard time standing up. Or maybe it's just uh, the, the light box that doesn't really, it is kind of bumpy, so... Actually, now I'm noticing it's not even him. It's not even a light box. It's just he has like almost like a little ball at the bottom that doesn't let him actually quite stand up. There. Alrighty, folks. So before we go over articulation, I always forget to do this. And every single time I stop the camera to start, you know, getting everything prepared for articulation, I see it because it's orange. My tape measure is orange, so it sticks out. And I should always do this when I do the, the paint details and just the figure himself. So this figure stands a little bit over six inches, about six, six and a quarter inches. So they call it six inches. So as far as articulation goes, we'll go from top to bottom. His head is on... Oh, actually I just noticed that now, wow. So his head is on a, a ball joint up up here at the neck. The neck is also at a ball joint, so the neck actually moves. So he has a 360 turn at the head. And I believe if you really, really wanted to, you can actually turn the neck 360, but I'm not going to because it's going to scuff up from the white. These are all my personal figures from my personal collection. I don't get sent figures to review, so most of the time when I'm reviewing a figure, I'm being very careful with them because I don't want to damage them. Anyway, so now that now that that's out of the way, I do want to say there's a butterfly joint right here, but there it's not part of his shoulder. It's just or it's not part of it. Like most butterfly joints are right here, so you can move the whole thing. But this does move sideways a little bit, and it goes up and down a little bit. It actually has this movement where you can actually pull it down and then go up. Or you're gonna go up and make it look nice and clean right there. So I do like that. So when you pull it down, there is a side to side motion and it goes up to about there. And it goes down to about there. When you can actually put it up, it actually goes right next to his body. I do believe if you pull it out, it does do a 360 turn. So that's nice. There is a double bend at the elbow, which is really nice. And I do believe. There's a single ball joint at the wrist, so it goes up and down. Just gotta find where it's, there it is. Up and down and 360 turn. No articulation at the fingers. The torso does have very nice movement. So going back, goes to about there. Going forward, goes to about there. And I do believe I mean, if you really wanted to, you can go 360. I'm not going to, so, but it does go side to side, to side as well. There's actually also movement at the waist. There's a 360 turn at the waist, which gives, which gives the figure a lot more articulation. As far as the legs go, I was thinking there were one that you can pull out a little bit like that, but you can't. They're kind of stiff, but anyway, so. Going forward to about there. Actually, you can. Yeah, you can pull it, pull it down a little bit. And going back to about there. There we go. Let me see. I believe he does have a double, double joint at the knee. So his knee does go higher than 90 degrees, even though not too much. 90 degrees would be about right there. So he does go a little bit higher than that. And as far as the ankle is concerned, there's no 360 turn. It won't let me turn it right here. It stops right here and it stops right here. It does go up and down side to side, which is very nice. And the toes have articulation. There's very few figures that have articulation at the toes. And I can appreciate this one having articulation there, so. That is it for articulation and what we're going to do next, there we go, is bring out some other figures and do some comparisons. Alrighty folks, I got him here with the AR-15. So this is a John Wick from Chapter 2 from Mafex. This figure I'm going to bring out is also from Mafex, but this is a John Wick from Chapter 1. Which is a little, little bit weird because 
on John Wick Chapter 2, he dresses in all black. So when I first got these figures, I would have thought that this was from John Wick Chapter, you know, Chapter 2, and this was from the first one, because he's wearing this in the end, most end of Ch John Wick Chapter 1. And he's wearing something like this in John Wick Chapter 2. So, I don't know why they did it like that. Um, overall, though, I think they're both nice figures. As you can see, this is what I was talking about. His hair is slicked back behind the ears and everything. And what I do like about this is, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Keanu Reeves' hair has changed um, from John Wick 1, 2, and 3. Like, he didn't cut his hair. Um, I believe he did that intentionally because of some movie things he's got going on, so he didn't want to cut his hair. That being said, you can see from this one to this one, the beard is more thicker and the hair is longer and thicker, which is a very nice detail that they did. Um, as far as the figures themselves, they're, they're pretty much the same exact figure. I do also want to say that they're pants and suit are pretty much the same even the shoes are about the same the only thing different is you got the white shirt and the you know the head sculpt so i don't know um you gotta let me know what you guys think here's a closer look about both of them i don't know i just kind of find it a little bit weird that with the, with the with the all black and then the black with the white shirt but anyway john wick from chapter 2 from Mayfax and John Wick from chapter 1 from Mayfax. Next, I'm going to bring out John Wick from chapter 1 from Diamond Select. As you can see, this figure is ridiculously taller. There we go. And as you can see, they're pretty much wearing the same exact thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm just trying to move the camera up. There we go. As you can see, they're pretty much wearing the same exact thing. Um, this one's face is just a little bit more, you know, bloodied up. There's, they didn't come with an extra head sculpt. Um, but as you can see, this Diamond Select one, he looks a lot more like Keanu Reeves than this one does. Maybe it's a little bit, you know, because the toy is a little bit bigger. He, he's about an inch taller than him. Other, other than that, they're pretty much the same exact figures. That one's shorter. This one has a little bit more details. I do want to say, if I'm not mistaken, actually, this one is actually a lot more articulate. I did it before on the other, on a previous one that I did, that Mayfax one. Let me bring it out just so you know what I'm talking about. When I did the video on this one, I did a comparison on, you know, in, in the video of articulation between this figure and this figure. And this figure actually has a lot more articulation. You know what I mean by that? So this figure, you saw, did all the articulation, except this, like I was saying, this one's a little bit more articulated. Um, he has articulation in the biceps, articulation in the in the thighs there, and this one doesn't. And it's crazy to think, you know, like I said before, his face looks a little bit more like Keanu Reeves than this one does. And then the price for both of them is just kind of, it's it's... This one's about three times more expensive than this one, which is kind of crazy. But anyway, so what we're going to do next is finish off this video. Alrighty, everyone, there he is, John Wick from Mayfax. I don't know if I said this earlier or not. He was released in 2019. If you like this video, please like and share and subscribe. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Also, I have an Instagram. If you want to see a sneak peek before YouTube, Please give me a follow. I will leave the link in the description down below. That being said, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.